Last time we discussed Tanahatham traditional food systems, and I just want to reinforce some key points. Uh, the Tanahatham Nation is located on the U.S.-Mexico border. It's about the size of Connecticut. It is comprised of nine contiguous districts and 11 total districts. There have been many citations for the decline of traditional farming practices as well as the high incidence of diabetes. Toka uh, from, uh, has pointed to the idea that farmers have uh, ha ended up leaving uh, a lot of their farms and moving to uh, other locations uh, over time. Also post-World War II we see a real shift in uh, practices on the Tonawatham Nation as more and more individuals are encouraged to participate in the cotton economy, in the economy uh, for uh, export off of the nation itself. Also it's important to keep in mind that as traditional farming practices became less essential, rainfall also became less essential to maintain lifestyle. And a lot of the rituals had grown up in association with the um, subsistence activities. So the Nawati or the rain ceremony, which was used to call down the rains, became no longer as, as culturally important as it once was, as there was a shift from um, subsistence practices towards uh, labor uh, movement outside of the nation uh, in a more capitalist or market-driven context as a whole. Today I'd like to talk uh, with you guys a little bit about what anthropology is and what constitutes anthropology. Um, and anthropology aims to describe in the broadest sense what it means to be a human being. The anthropological perspective is holistic, comparative, evolutionary, and field-based. And anthropology can be defined as the study of the human nature, human society, and the human past. I'm going to go through each one of the components of the anthropological perspective. Uh, anthropology is holistic. Uh, we as anthropologists attempt to integrate everything that is known about human beings from each of the subfields of anthropology in um, order to uh, integrate that into the highest and most inclusive level. It's necessarily interdisciplinary in nature and so you have uh, anthropologists who are working in unison with individuals from many different disciplines and in fact are crossing a lot of these disciplines themselves in their field work. It's comparative in that anthropologists will consider similarities and differences in wide ranges of human societies before coming to any generalizations about human nature, human society, or the past. It's also evolutionary, and this is one of the key aspects of anthropology, and I think one of the things that, things that distinguishes it from many of the other social sciences is the deep historical time within which anthropologists consider change and continuity in human societies. Um, and this really comes from the uh, subfields of biological anthropology as well as archaeology. Anthropology relies on the concept of culture in order to explain the diversity of human ways of life. One definition of culture, uh, it can be defined as sets of learned behavior and ideas that we as human beings acquire as members of society. We indeed utilize culture to adapt and to transform the world in which we live in a variety of ways in order to suit our purposes. This idea of niche construction, modification of the environment, as well as infrastructure to suit our purposes, and indeed language and learning become really key parts in that and, and lead to our evolutionary success um, throughout um, a deep history of our species as a whole. In the United States today, there are between four and five uh, major subfields. Uh, the four traditional subfields are considered biological anthropology, archaeology, cultural anthropology, and linguistic anthropology. The fifth subfield is a little bit more recent addition. Uh, many programs have come uh, with applied anthropology as a focus. Uh, there's a little bit of debate within anthropology about whether applied should be a unique field or whether it should be integrated across all of the other um, subfields of anthropology. In terms of the holistic nature of anthropology, in an ideal world, you have the different subfields of anthropology all informing one another. So you have biological anthropologists who are using data and information gained from archaeologists, cultural anthropologists, and, and linguistics uh, in order to inform their work. Um, and here, of course, you can see an example of applied being a, uh, in an area where everything that is known is used to focus on particular uh, issues that are that are uh, individuals are confronting in particular societies. Uh, I now like to go through each one of the subfields or major fields in anthropology in turn and talk about them a little bit. Um, first, biological anthropology. This looks at human beings as biological organisms, but it, 
it, it does so in the context of, of trying to distinguish what makes us unique from other species as well as what characteristics we potentially share with other species. Biological anthropologists have a number of different foci, uh, from primatologists who study non-human primates, which are our closest living relatives, uh, paleoanthropologists, which will look for fossilized remains of humanity's earliest ancestors, uh, those that focused on human adaptability in different ecological and set settings, which note differences in human growth as, de as well as development. And many of you are likely familiar with forensic anthropologists, which are, uh, which are uh, shown on many uh, popular television uh, shows, crime uh, dramas, uh, forensic anthropologists looking at human remains. And molecular anthropologists will look at chemical similarities and differences in the immune system overall. overall. Science uh, itself is a product of, of the time period. It also reinforces a particular ideology of the time period within which it finds itself. Uh, and we can see this clearly in the context of um, early discussions of biological anthropologists and the notion of race. Uh, we can think about racism as the systematic oppression of one uh, or more socially defined races by another socially defined race that is justified in terms of the supposed inherent biological superiority of the rulers and the supposed inherent biological inferiority of those they rule. And this idea of this inherent superiority or inferiority goes to this notion of, of, of cognitive capacity. And this was the, the work of, of some uh, early biological anthropologists who were doing things like measuring cranial capacity. And you had studies that were done in both Europe and the United States that uh, typically found that the individuals of that nationality who were white and male had the largest cranial capacity. These studies were flawed uh, in the fact that these scientists were, had an idea in mind of what they were looking for and they actually went out and found it. Um, and indeed, these uh, collections have been reanalyzed and have found no statistically significant difference between the size of the skulls uh, and the underlying justification for a continued racism uh, based on cranial capacity and so-called scientific information. Anthropologists have also been at the forefront of confronting these racist stereotypes and attempting to debunk uh, these racist stereotypes, including Franz Boas and Washburn, uh, who really taught against these notions of, uh, of um, biological anthropology reinforcing uh, notions of race and, and racism in, in the United States. Linguistic anthropology. Uh, linguistic anthropologists will approach cultural diversity by relating varied forms of language to their particular cultural context. In a real general sense, we can think about language as a system of arbitrary si systems that is used to encode one's experience of the world and others as a whole. Uh, one of my major interests in linguistic anthropology is that uh, the connections between linguistic diversity, cultural diversity, and biological diversity. And you can see that there on the left, uh, the map uh, mapping out uh, of um, linguistic diversity. But you can also see many overlaps between linguistic diversity, biological diversity, and cultural diversity. Linguistic anthropologists would study um, not only the speech itself, but how the speech is delivered, the uh, interaction between uh, both the uh, listener and the giver of speech, and then uh, all the subtle cues that individuals will look to and see if they're uh, engaged or being engaged by uh, the speaker and or the listener, and, ha and also the notions of turn-taking and power in the context of uh, exchange overall. Uh, in terms of the different specializations of linguistic anthropologists, you have historic linguistics, which looks at how languages change over time. Comparative linguistics, which looks at the study of relationships in the same language family, how these may have descended from a common ancestor or what is referred to as proto-language. Some of the more interesting uh, and cutting-edge research here would be new forms of communication, uh, computer-mediated communications. Uh, Mike Wesh's work on anthropological introduction to YouTube gets out a little bit of this, but also how things like gender or ethnicity uh, might, or relative age might be able to be um, found out based on how uh, people type or communicate with one another online. And then again, one of my major interests here, the, the notion of linguistic preservation is revi and, and, and revitalization as well, and how linguistic revitalization ties very much into cultural revitalization. This is certainly something that I saw uh, to be true on the Ta-Notham Nation overall. Uh, I myself am a cultural anthropologist. Uh, cultural anthropology in the past was 
uh, really relegated to the so-called primitive societies where sociology was uh, focused more on civilized societies and so this set up this sort of dichotomy between the West versus the rest and um, now increasingly we're seeing this study of uh, cultural diversity in urban as well as rural societies in a variety of different settings. Cultural anthropology aims to show how variation in beliefs and behaviors of members of different human groups is shaped by culture. And again, culture is a set of learned behaviors and ideas that we acquire as members of a particular society. Uh, the fourth major characteristic of anthropology uh, is that it is field-based. And so anthropologists engage in field work, particularly cultural anthropologists. Uh, this involves an extended period of close involvement with people uh, in whose language or way of life anthropologists are interested in, during which anthropologists typically collect most of their data. Uh, these individuals that are worked with are, have historically been referred to as informants. Uh, this has had some negative connotations, and so there are different uh, terminology for uh, individuals um, respondents, teachers, friends, or people I work with are some of those examples. Uh, in terms of uh, another subfield of anthropology, we have archaeology, which can be thought about as a cultural anthropology of the human past. And there's a really wide range of interest here. Um, so you have specialists in lithics look, that are looking at stone tools, uh, to garbologists who are looking at 20th century garbage dumps. And uh, the, for example, the city of Phoenix was able to reduce its overall waste by looking at garbology or the study of garbage and how people were throwing away things and why they were and what those attitudes were that shaped that. And I believe it was something around 9% reduction uh, in the amount of waste that was generated in the city of Phoenix. So this of course leads to very much applied sort of work in terms of decreasing the overall cost uh, in the municipality and the city uh, overall. Uh, uh, archaeologists examine artifacts, which are portable objects, which have been modified by human beings. And typically you have archaeologists working, um, and this accounts for the deep time depth here um, that goes beyond history uh, to preliterate societies. Um, so archaeologists are finding out lots of information about um, societies that did not use writing to communicate with one another. Um, in addition to lithics, you might have experts in uh, metallurgy or um, ancient pottery uh, as well. Uh, the last subfield of anthropology is applied anthropology. And applied anthropologists use information from other specialties and disciplines in order to solve practical cross-cultural problems in things like healthcare. Uh, as well as economic development. So you see development anthropology, some of the critique coming from the anthropology of development, as well as uh, medical anthropology, utilization of biomedicine and complementary and alternative medicine uh, for human health outcomes. You can see in the lower picture here is an example of anthropometry where nutritional outcomes are being measured by uh, measuring the relative growth of young children. Between zero and five years of age, you have a very key time in childhood development as well as overall health of the child. Uh, and so anthropometry comes into play here to look at where nutritional interventions are needed as well as the potential success of those nutritional interventions. And that's just one example for medical anthropology. Uh, there are entire uh, journals that are dedicated specifically to medical anthropology, and anthropologists are focused exclusively uh, within the medical context, including working for major hospitals. Uh, overall in that class, I, I think that some of the things that I'd like you to come away with, particularly when thinking about world problems or, or, or global issues, is how do we make sense of our lives in relation to others? And why are certain things important to you? Uh, for, and why might they be important to other people uh, or not important to other people? Also, the holistic nature of anthropology comes into play here. Uh, how can we see issues as interconnected and related with one another? Further, in our greater understanding of one another and cross-culturally, how can empathy potentially be extended uh, and greater understanding of the human condition as a whole?